Hey guys, Jerry Berg, the poor historian here, bringing you the second part of the Spanish Tourism Sword review, and also showing off my new in-progress heavy weapons wall. Pretty cool. Did you know that Christmas tree stands make great stands for, uh, great swords? Isn't that cool? Thrift stores. But in addition to uh, other poor things, I want to bring you the second part of the Spanish um, Tourism Sword review. We did the first part, La Tizona, earlier, and I got inspired and checked out eBay and I found myself the second one, a version of La Colada, uh, a side sword which a, with a very complex hilt, so I wanted to bring you the review of that. Now this particular version, like we said, I'm not going to get into too much of the details of the history or, or geography, I guess, of the uh, Spanish tourism because we did that in the first video, um, but... Uh, like we said in the in the video about La Tizona, La Colada has many, many, many different styles. Uh, and this one in particular, I believe, might actually not be a tourism version of it, though it is definitely a poor historian uh, sword. Definitely poor quality. So we're going to dive into a bit of the details. Just to clarify, this version is the one that has a completely silver hilt and guard and grip and all that. It's actually kind of off-putting, but we'll get into that in a bit. So I always like to start these reviews with a view of the scabbard. Uh, as is normal, these poor historian swords, you can identify the scabbard, um, or the scabbard, <laughs> identifying the scabbard is a good way to tell if a sword is poor quality, like this one. Um, so if you look at this, it has, kind of see the light in there, there, it has a kind of cool design along the scabbard. Just a little bit of tooling. Not too special, but it's more than just your basic. However, if we take it out, you'll see some identifying characteristics. On the back, as you'll always see on these poor swords, they have a built-in belt holder. So you can throw it on your belts and look cool. That's not historical. Um, in addition to that, this has this weird kind of flappy bits at the end. Not too sure about that, but it does give us a good look at the inside of this. It does claim to be 100% leather. Though just holding it back, see if you can see it, it's separating. So it is definitely, at least in part, not leather. We already knew that. Uh, in addition to that, it is rigid but flexible, which is because you can see the layers on here. It has a thick foamy layer here, maybe leather, maybe rubber. Oh. Uh, and then, of course, the two top layers. So it is rigid, which is nice, but it's definitely not a historically made scabbard, which would be most frequently... Um, wood with a leather cover. Um, but, I digress. Scabbard, better than standard. It's still, ugh, still bad. So, let's dive into the sword itself. Um, one neat thing about this uh, is, before I actually, about the, the type of sword itself, before I dive into this particular sword, is I really like the complex hilt on this. Uh, and it is one of those styles where it does have a dull ricasso, so that you can uh, stick your finger up there for a much more forward-facing and controlled grip, uh, in addition to the uh, hammer grip, schlager grip, grip, whatever style you want to call it. Uh, so where do we dive in with this? Let's let's dive into the most fun part right here. Most identifying characteristic of poor historian swords, Pakistan. Yeah, right there. Fun. Um, if your sword is stamped with Pakistan, it is not high quality. Very likely it is uh, stainless steel, which means it's not something that you want to fight with. Uh, you should never fight with a poor historian sword, that's just dangerous. But on that topic, this sword actually comes sharp. Ugh. That's bad. That is bad. If your sword costs less than $100 and comes sharp, uh, it's bad. Very likely it's for a collector who thinks he knows a lot about swords and doesn't. Uh, because swords are supposed to be sharp, right? It's cool to have a, sh a sharp sword. Uh -uh. No, it's not. The only way that it's cool to have a sharp sword is if it's high quality, and maybe you're having a cutting party or a cut test um, to see what it's actually like. But it is bad, I'll make it very clear, if you have a poor sword and it's sharp, that's a bad thing. So, um, speaking of, of cost, this particular one I got what I assume is used. Uh for $25 on eBay total. Cool, good stuff. And I think the last time I bought this, it actually had the same descriptive, random, historical sounding words thrown together. Uh, Viking, arming, sword, blade, 
combo rapier in the title of the article. I'll probably post it on the side what it actually was when I look at it. But it that's another red flag about whether to tell if a sword is poor, a poor sword, a low quality sword. Um, <laughs> You'll see, you'll know if you'll know what I mean if you ever type in the word sword in eBay and look at the titles. Um, Twenty five dollars, good. It claimed to be used. What I think is that it's just stating that it's used, and some factory is is shipping it off. Um, I actually got this uh, similarly with another sword. I'm not going to do a poor historian review of it because it's the first time I've ever seen it. But I at least want to show it. Let me grab it. This, this sword right here, kind of cool. It's, a, it's another poor historian style that has a complex hilt. This whole thing is taken apart, has this kind of wide clamshell grip. Um, this one also comes sharp. Very similar blade to the, to the other one. Now, I'm not going to do a review of this sword because I, I've never seen it before. I got it, I got it on an eBay bid. I've never been able to find it used. If you guys can identify this sword, please post in the comments below. I, I would definitely like to do a review of it. Um, Except I'm giving this as a Christmas gift. <laughs> I've got lots of swords to give away. Back to the sword itself. Let's dive into the actual review six and a half minutes into the video. Um, <clears throat> the blade is stainless steel. The blade also does not have a fuller, so it's a fairly simple blade. However, it does taper slightly. It's a good detail. Um, however, it's, it's a very slight taper. Um, another cool detail, like I, I touched on it a little bit, is the ricasso here. While the rest of the blade is sharp, the ricasso is dull, um, which would be something you would see frequently, especially in, in side swords like this, so you can have your little finger, your index finger, here in the hilt. So, very cool. However, the real meat of this horrible sword is right here in the hilt itself. This is, I don't even know how to describe this. Uh, we kind of saw it a little bit with the guard on the Tizona sword, but it's definitely some kind of modern metal. It's not steel. It looks cast. It looks like it's been cast, and then it's so ridiculously shiny that it looks like it's been chromed. That's another bad. That's another. That's another bad thing to have in a poor historian sword. Um, however, I'm trying as hard as I can to unscrew this pommel, and it's not working. So. That has a little bit of points going for it. It's always good to not be able to unscrew a sword, but in this case, I would really like to be able to unscrew this um, just so I could I just so I could show it to you, really. Um, <clears throat> slight bonus, but not, not enough. Um, the one thing I did like about this compared to the Tizona sword is that the original uh, swords of El Cid, Tizona, and Colada, uh, they were actually 3D. They, they had little things sticking out this side and this side. Um, 3D is the wrong description for it, but it stuck out on the side. La Tizona, the one that I showed you in the last video, didn't have any of that sticking out. This one does a little bit. It has a little bit sticking out there. That's good. That means that it's they didn't just stamp it out. I'm sure they did just stamp it out, but uh, at least it has a little bit of depth and complexity to it, which is very good. Um, one other weird thing, <clears throat> if you look at the grip here, now this is clearly supposed to look like a wire-wrapped grip, a wire-wrapped hilt, um, meaning that they would wrap wire around it to make a, a solid, um, very rough grip. However, it's not. It's just a solid chunk of metal made to look like there's wire wrapped around it. <laughs> That's not good. Um, I guess to this is this is a fairly short video. I wanted to show you the col la colada before I actually. Packed this one up as well for a Christmas gift. Um, this is not a very good sword um, for various reasons. It looks shiny. If you're looking for something to decorate and you don't care about people judging you based on your knowledge of sword, it's shiny. It's sharp. You can say you have a sharp sword and you can think that that's cool. So that's for you. Um, however, if you're doing this for costuming or reenacting or anything, Everyone is going to be able to tell that this is not an appropriate sword from a mile away. It's bright, it's shiny, it's got solid pieces of metal, stainless steel blade, it's sharp. You should never use a costuming sword that's sharp. Um, or never take a sword costuming if it is sharp. Bad sword. We'll see what it gets in the grades. Other than that, take care you guys. Until next time.
One more. Minor note. Minor note, guys. Um, about how the scabbard fits with the sword itself. Uh, weird, weird thing I noticed as I was putting it away after the video. I'm shutting it, and it kind of... You can see that it kind of hits on the guard here. It, if I try to push it, it's going to continue on the outside of that of that guard, which is not good. Um, so then we'll have to push it together, kind of force it to go under there, but then it's still being pushed. You can see that it's not sitting well. Um, the weird thing is that it almost seems like they made that, they made this construction knowing how long the blade was, didn't realize the guard was in there, and then they have these two flappy bits at the end, almost so it's intentionally supposed to go on the outside of the guard. <sighs> Come on, guys. I mean, I know this, this is, this is classic poor historian sword nonsense right here. Like, oops, we made a mistake. Well, cut some more stuff out of it and just force it to work. Ugh. So, one more minor, <laughs> final note. Take care. Till next time. Thank you.